That came out pretty cool, huh? You know, thermal paste, it's a simple step in building your PC, but it's something that we get a lot of questions about. For instance, what are these little syringes full of gray goop, and what are these different shapes, and what do they mean? Well, today we're going to talk about thermal paste, and we are going to talk about everything thermal paste. What is it? What are the different types? What does thermal paste do? What are the different methods of applying thermal paste? And so much more. Well, actually, that's going to about cover it. That's still a lot to cover in one video. But we're also going to show you how we made our own custom Micro Center logo applicator for thermal paste. And I think it came out pretty awesome. When your CPU is running, it generates heat. And it generates a lot of heat. That's where the cooler comes in. Whether you use an air cooler or if you want to go with a water cooler, the job of the cooler is to remove the heat away from the CPU so it can run effectively. The cooler sits right on top of the IHS of the CPU, which is the integrated heat spreader here. The thing is, the IHS and the plate of the cooler have small microscopic variances on them, meaning they're not perfectly flat. Even when this is right on top of this, there can be little microscopic air bubbles. Now, if you remember anything from high school science class, you'll know that air is a terrible conductor of heat. That's where thermal paste comes in. Thermal paste is thermally conductive, meaning it allows for the transference of heat from the IHS to the cooler, and because of its goopy nature, for lack of a better word, it spreads out evenly across the IHS and the cooler, and it fills all of those microscopic variances. Now, thermal paste comes in many different forms, but we're going to boil it down to conductive and non-conductive thermal paste. A non-conductive thermal paste, like ceramic or silicone, they're great for first-time builders since they're relatively easy to apply, easy to clean up, and they do not conduct electricity. So if you accidentally spill any on your components, it won't short anything out. And it's not going to have electricity going where it shouldn't be. Conductive thermal paste can have metal, such as silver, copper, aluminum, gallium, or other conductive metals. And while being ideal for being the best heat conductor, they can be the hardest to work with. And if you make any mistakes, you risk shorting your board. They also have the added fun of bonding with certain cooler types, such as gallium-based thermal paste bonding to aluminum on your cooler. Either way, if you're building for the first time, Odds are, you'll be using whatever thermal paste came with your cooler. And that's totally fine. As a new builder, you're going to get a lot of mileage from the stock thermal paste from your cooler. There's lots of varieties of thermal paste out there because there's lots of different use cases that they're best suited for. Thermal conductivity is one factor that comes into play when looking into thermal paste beyond your stock thermal paste that came with your cooler. Different thermal pastes will have different levels of conducting heat, and there's a rating that you can check. This is represented in watts per meter Kelvin, or watts per square meter of the surface area. Since the surface area is so small, and we have some CPUs that have TDPs of 125 watts, we obviously want something with a higher thermal conductivity rating. These thermal pastes here are all non-conductive, and their thermal conductivity rating ranges from 4 watts per meter Kelvin to 8.5 watts per meter Kelvin. Meanwhile, something like liquid metal has a thermal conductivity of 73 watts per meter Kelvin. All of this is to say that if you want to push your system by overclocking and maximizing its performance potential, you want to use the best thermal paste available. Applying thermal paste is quite simple even if this is your first PC build. The trick is you do not want to apply too much, but you also don't want to apply too little. Too little, and the heat won't conduct to the cooler as efficiently, but too much, it can make a very big mess. The most common application method for putting thermal paste is called the pea size method, because what you're gonna put is a small little dot right in the center of the CPU IHS, and it's gonna be about the size of a pea, or a few millimeters across. So you simply take your thermal paste, you remove the bottom cover, you have your syringe here, and then right in the center of the IHS, you just put your dot. Obviously it's not the shape of a P because it's gooping out a little bit, but there you go. And that should be enough to cover this CPU. If you're wondering what to do next, that's it. You're all set. Your thermal paste is on your CPU and you're ready to put your cooler. When you put your cooler on, 
That's actually going to take the thermal paste and it's going to spread it evenly across the IHS. Now I have this little piece of acrylic plastic that I can use to show you what that's gonna look like. Here, why don't you come here? So when your cooler goes on, it's gonna go right on top and it's gonna take that thermal paste and spread it right across. And you can see how the pea size spreads onto the IHS. And we have pretty good coverage on the center. You see it went down a little bit. And all things considered, this is an effective amount of thermal paste. Let's look at some other application methods. Now we're gonna try the line method. And this is really just more of an elongated pea size method. So you take your thermal paste and you go ahead and you just make a line right down the middle. And then you can see when you put your cooler on, it's gonna spread it across just like that. So we got a little bit more coverage. There you go. We have this nice oval shape. Cool, not bad. Now let's try another method. I'm just gonna clean this up. The next method we're gonna try is the five dots. This is similar to the pea size, but you're gonna get four extra dots in the corners. So we're gonna put one dot right in the center and one in each corner. And this is ideal for these LGA 1700 CPUs and even AM5 CPUs because of the uh, different shape. It's not a perfect square, so this helps get better coverage all around. And you can see when the cooler goes on, we get our spread. And there you go, you got basically full coverage on the IHS all the way across. A little bit of spillage here. You can see that a little bit coming out on the sides there. So that shows that I actually use a little bit too much on that corner. But looking at the IHS, we got very good coverage. And now we get to clean it up again. Now we'll do the X method, which is basically the line and the five dot method combined. You take your thermal paste and you're gonna make two lines diagonally right across. And that's gonna make an X right on the IHS. Now let's see what it looks like when we put on our cooler. Look at that. Almost full coverage across the IHS. Although I can already tell a little bit spilled out on the side there. But you got pretty good coverage there. Let's take a look when we pull this off. Yeah, you can see a little bit spilled out on the side, but overall, very good coverage. The last method we're gonna show is the bread and butter method. And just like spreading butter on your bread, we've got a little applicator here, just like a butter knife. So I'm gonna take the thermal paste, I'll put it on the IHS, and I think I'll just do a nice little line. I'm gonna take the spreader and just gently spread it across the IHS. And this method is really recommended for beginners who have a hard time judging how much thermal paste they should really use. Obviously the pea size, there's a lot of variance there and putting too little is not gonna help you out. So this kind of gives you a good judgment of how much thermal paste you should put. I'll be honest, this feels like a lot of thermal paste. And even though I'm spreading it around, once the cooler touches down on this, that's gonna spread it even further and thin this out. So I feel like I don't need to spread it this much. All right, so let's take a look and see how that's gonna look when we put our cooler down. So all in all, not too bad. We got full coverage across the board, but it looks like here, I actually have some air gaps. Now I can try to push this down because maybe I'm not doing full force. Yeah, that'll fill it up a little bit. If you tighten the cooler just right, that should get it. But it does leave you open to the possibility of getting air bubbles in there. But that is full coverage across the board. It looks like some did spill on the side. Let's take a look when we pull this off. There we go. Yeah, a little bit came off on the bottom there, but that is full coverage in the IHS. 
So if you're not feeling too confident about the pea size or some of the other methods, this is a good method for you to try. Now we'll try one more method. Uh, this Thermaltake TG50 thermal paste comes with a spreader, but it also comes with this little design cutout and it's on an adhesive that we're gonna put on the IHS. Then we're gonna spread the thermal paste across the adhesive and it's gonna leave this cool looking shape. Let's give this a shot. I'm gonna peel the plastic off and then I'm just gonna place this down. I'm gonna use the applicator to sort of use it to put pressure here. And I'm gonna take the thermal paste and I'll just apply some. And I'm thinking I'll just put a little bit kind of going across in each channel. Cause I don't think we need too much. <laughs> Boy, this looks like a mess, huh? Now we'll take our applicator and we'll use it to just spread it. And I think I'll just pull it right up like this. Now let's take this off and see how the shape looks. Ooh, a little goopy there, but we've got our shape. So it looks like it peeled some up from up here, but otherwise we've got pretty good coverage across the center, which is where it's gonna be the most important. You can see all the little hexagon shapes, they'll all connect to one another when you put enough pressure on. So it seems like we've got pretty okay coverage. It's not edge to edge on the IHS, but we do have coverage across the most important part, which is the middle. Cool. So we said we were gonna show you how we made this custom Micro Center logo thermal paste shape here. So what we did was, the first time we took the logo and we used a laser to cut out the shape onto this little construction paper. Obviously, I know not everybody has a laser, but we found this to be the most accurate method to get these small little nooks and crannies and these little shapes in between here. Now, when we did it with the construction paper, it didn't work that well because the construction paper was moving around on the CPU too much to give us a good shape. What we ended up doing was we ended up using masking tape and we used the laser to actually cut the logo onto the masking tape. The cool thing about masking tape is that even though it has adhesive on it, it's a very low stick adhesive, so it peels right off the CPU. You don't have to worry about any residue staying behind. With the laser etched logo on the masking tape, we were able to stick it right on, and then we used the spreader to spread the thermal paste over the logo, peeled it up, and we got this nice, sharp, clean line here on all sides, and it looks pretty cool, I think. Obviously, if you wanna do this yourself, not everybody has a laser. What you can do is you can take any custom shape and you can use an X-Acto knife, and masking tape. You can cut the shape into the masking tape itself, just apply the masking tape right on there, and you have your own custom shape for thermal paste. Obviously, it's not gonna give you any performance benefit, but it makes for a really cool photo. Removing thermal paste is actually very simple. All you need is some paper towels and some isopropyl alcohol. We have this spray bottle with 70% isopropyl, but I also have this bottle of 91%. Either one's gonna work, but I'll stick with the 91. Just take your isopropyl, put a liberal amount on the uh, paper towel here, and then you're just gonna take this and you're simply just gonna wipe it right off. And the thermal paste will come off. Now, if your CPU cooler has been on your CPU for a long time, sometimes the thermal paste will dry out and that's okay. It'll still come off with rubbing alcohol and every once in a while, you might have to just run your computer for a little bit so the CPU can get warmed up and the thermal paste can also warm up, or it'll still come off with rubbing alcohol, though it's gonna take some work. 91% is ideal because it dries very quickly and you don't have to worry about it ruining any of the electronics if you get some on there. And there's a little bit of thermal paste here in this corner I'm gonna try to remove as well. And there you go, removing the thermal paste, very simple. Now, we did some benchmarking, and frankly, you're not gonna see much of a performance difference between the different application methods of thermal paste. What you will see is a difference in the different types of thermal paste that are used. And this will ultimately make a bigger difference for cooling your CPU than the method for which it was applied. Now, I think we've covered everything there is when it comes to thermal paste. 
Remember to stop by your local Micro Center and check out our wide range of thermal paste options and other PC parts. And if you made it this far in the video, make sure to comment hashtag I want a Micro Center near me.